What's up YouTube? Bubbles and Ball Cards back with another video. Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, it's Monday, December 5th. Uh, I actually apologize. I am re-recording the video. <laughs> I did the advent calendar and uh, it was a pack of Fusion Strike Pokemon for day five. Um, I didn't even think about that when I stopped the other video and instead of editing it, I, I probably should have just kept it and edited part of it out where I lost track of focus of what I was doing. But anyway, I did the advent calendar. It was a pack of fusion strikes. So uh, the hit in it was just a regular hollow. Um, I didn't do the hockey talk yesterday because I wanted to share the card show and you know the video and talk about all of that the experience of that so i'm gonna do the hockey tonight um real quick and simple really uh the top teams in each division right now are new jersey devils strong young team there boston uh they're playing the vegas golden knights tonight uh dallas and then the aforementioned vegas is playing boston so uh that's your four division leaders at the moment um i really i'm you know as someone that watches dallas i really hope they can get their overtime game together because they've had a lot of points off of going to overtime but just not successful in overtime so uh, i really hope they can get the overtime game together um rookie spotlight real quick i'm just gonna throw this guy out here he was in a video i did uh, i don't remember if it was episode two or episode three um, but anyway, he, uh, I, I mentioned him because he's a Kraken and I said he was going to cost me a lot of money. Well, he has been playing lights out. Matty Beneers, he looks really good when he's on the ice. Just turned 20 years old in November. Acts like he's been in the league for a while. It definitely does not seem like the game is too much for him, even at a young age. I like that he... Has a very high uh, shot percentage, where which means uh, the shots he takes, you know, 20.8% of them are goals. I really like seeing that. Um, and I also mentioned beforehand, uh, I'm new to this. I'm new to the hockey thing, the prospecting and all that. But I, one thing that I always look for when I'm looking at players is I want somebody that's at around a goal, or not a goal, a, a point per game average. And as you can see here, uh, for this season, he has played 20, 24 games with 21 points. 10 of those 21 points have been goals with 11 assists, so he's kind of balanced on the goals to assist as well. So I really like seeing that. Uh, I think with Kraken being a new team, they have a pretty solid fan base already. Um, I, he could be the face of a franchise for years to come, and he looks like he's going to be very talented in the league. So somebody to keep an eye on. Obviously, the hottest guy in hockey and hockey cards right now uh, is the guy I've been accused of pumping, which is Jason Robertson. I just want to clarify, I have no reason to pump anybody. Um, I, I post my eBay store. Uh, you can go on anytime and look at eBay. I have a Facebook group that many of the folks watch the channel. You know, people can see if... If you want to call me out for pumping something, keep eyes on what I'm selling, right? Um, I'm selling some hockey right now. Go and find out how many Jason Robertsons I've sold. I can tell you, it's a round number, a very round number. In fact, it makes a circle. Uh, I actually am probably pretty dumb for not selling him because I personally know that or feel like that he could be peeking out on his prices. There, There's two sides to the coin. He, you know, he's on an 18-game point streak right now. If he continues that, his cards could continue to rise. If he doesn't continue that, they'll likely drop back down a little bit. 
So he's in this point now where there's been such a surge on them. And I'm talking like the future watch autos have just exploded. The young guns, not long ago, I told somebody I thought they were a good buy at 40 bucks. I don't know what they are now raw, but I can guarantee you a lot more than $40. Um, so for anyone to sit here and say that I'm pumping him, uh, I, I don't know, like this comes, this happens a lot with, I, I don't know if it's trolls or people that just need stuff to talk about. Um, but it seems like if you post players you like or teams or cards or sets or whatever, and you share that with folks, you're immediately considered to be a pumper. Um, the only question I have is what the hell good does it do me? Except if I'm sitting here telling you that I really like this kid and I'm not selling, doesn't that defeat my purpose if I was trying to pump? And controversially to that, if I'm still trying to buy him, why would I want the prices to go up to then just cost me more? Um, so y'all, the people that say that kind of stuff, they need to think about what they're saying. If y'all see me unload my Jason Robertson collection, call me out 100%. And I will be 100% transparent right now. I have had conversations about posting my green PMG at a stupid price Fielding offers if there was any interest only because I could then potentially use that money to get into a future watch or, you know, a couple others that I really like and move from one card into several that I like. Um, but it would have to be, I, I had a number in mind of what the offer would need to be to get it off the table and... At that price, I would be kind of stupid because I am in less to that card than, than my number in my head. Way less. So, um, I still, to this day, haven't even listed that, even though I've talked about it. So, again, you know, I, I this is a hobby. We're supposed to share things. Just because I'm on YouTube behind a camera and a microphone and I'm sharing cards with you, it doesn't mean I'm pumping anybody. Um, the kid is legit pumping himself. I mean, I don't know how much more of a like how much more of a tear you can go on. Um, I think they said. I think I seen earlier he's gotten he's had thirty four points in the eighteen game streak. I mean, think about that. He he's twenty three years old. Twenty three, and he's got forty one points on the year. And I'm pretty certain they said. That Well, hell, there's only 25 games in the season, and he scored in 18 straight of them. So I'm pretty sure they said he's got 34 points in the 18-game streak. Um, 23 goals leading the NHL in goals. I mean, to do that alone right now, when you have guys like McDavid and Austin Matthews and those guys in this league, that's insane. So I don't have to pump him. I don't have to tell people, hey, Jason Robertson's good. It's freaking everywhere. It's on ESPN. It's... Jeff Wilson's talking about, I mean, everybody's, like, if you don't know who he is, then you just pay absolutely zero attention to sports or hockey or whatever, because I guarantee you've heard the name. So, anyway, um, now, let's talk about hockey cards. I want to share this because this is something um, I mentioned just a few minutes ago. I've been selling some of my hockey cards. Uh, I talked about skinning the fat off the collection uh, I have accumulated a lot of graded young guns. I really enjoy collecting hockey, but I was getting an abundance of them, and I want to focus more just on specific sets, cards, players that I really, really want. Uh, not just stashing people away because I sent it in and it got graded and whatever. Um, that's just literally keeping stuff in a box unnecessarily or unnecessary that I don't have a passion for. And so although I enjoyed building this collection, it was also taking up space and 
I'm just not like involved or attached to some of those guys and I would rather put it more into things that I really enjoy. Y'all see when I go to card shows, I hunt for Ken Griffey Jr. I don't care how many Griffeys I have, I love collecting Ken Griffey Jr. A random, you know, even though they could be a very good hockey player, uh, a random, you know, a young gun of theirs is cool to have, but it's not something that I'm like hell bent on keeping or necess you know needed in my collection. So I'm gonna show you guys. These are my past 30 days. These are all like this is my top numbers in order actually, which is crazy. Uh, this one here I just sold tonight, so it didn't load up the description and everything, but. You can pull that item number up if you want to see what I'm talking about. This was a Cole Caulfield. I actually have it right here because I need to package it up when I'm done here. Cole Caulfield in a 10. Um, so that's this one. And then you see here the Caprice Off, a William Nylander, PSA 10, Zegris, uh, Zegris Canvas, a Rosmus Dahlin, uh, Adam Fox, and a Carter Hart. So right there you see those. Um, this totaled out and this is where I had had this number wrote down and I forgot what the hell I meant to talk about because I couldn't remember what I wrote the number for. Um, it's like 1302 total here and averages out to 162.75 a card. Um, not massive money, but for, I, I really, I've, I've talked about this with a few folks. Um, I love baseball and I love hockey cards and hockey now. Um, but one thing I've found is opening a hobby box of either product, and I'm talking, you know, Upper Deck is essentially like flagship baseball. But if you go to a hobby shop and you buy a hobby box of Upper Deck, and then you buy a hobby box of Tops, whether it be Series 1, 2, or Update, and both products have the similar configuration, Upper Deck has Series 1, Series 2, and now they have Extended Series. But if you buy... A box of each of them the price per box is going to be similar roughly anywhere from $80 to $120 um, depending on you know the rookie class how, the, the sales of it I guess all that stuff um, 80 is probably a bit too low but they used you used to be able to get them for around 80 bucks uh, so we'll say 80 to 120 that's gonna be about the same price for both products the difference is, I feel like when you're opening a box of tops, you're simply chasing either a good rookie autograph or some sort of parallel of a particular rookie chase card. Because the base elements of those boxes now, we know the print runs are so insanely high that the value on a base flagship rookie card in baseball is significantly like lower than it used to be. So if you don't get a parallel or a, an SP vari a variant or an auto of the rookie or something like that, it's a busted box, so to speak, with return value. Now, sure, it's fun. I, I don't want to get that twisted. It's fun and all that. But what I like about hockey is, yeah, you're not going to like make your money back every time. But one thing that I have noticed over the, what, three years now, I guess, that we've collected hockey. One thing I do is I don't care how much the guy is worth right now. I don't care how well he's doing right now. I will sleeve and top load every single young gun we pull. Reason being, a guy might not really, like, look at Robertson. This is like technically his third season, so to speak, and he's blown up. So you don't know when some of these guys could potentially break out. And the same goes for baseball. I just feel like there's so many rookie cards printed for tops and for flagship and stuff. There's a lot of young guns, but there's only six per hobby box. So you know that there's not like... I don't know, 80 rookies out of a hobby box of tops, you're getting six. There's 50 total rookies in the Series 1 or Series 2 product. You know, it's broken into 50s. And then from that, you get six per box. So just over 10% 
of the rookie checklist would be in a box. So it's not like, you know, every pack you might get a rookie or two rookies or whatever. It's literally six. You might get a canvas, you might get an extra one in there sometimes or whatever, but it's very limited. So the hockey like crowd also, what I what I'd like to point out here is since so many people say you can't sell SGC, I have noticed very for a while now, um, even when I was selling duplicates only and stuff like that. The hockey community, I guess maybe because they have KSA, maybe because they have M&T, uh, they're familiar with other grading companies. They're not so specific on PSA. Like, sure, PSA will sell for more, but you can sell SGC slabs. You could probably sell KSA, m and and whoever else because the hockey fans, I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like the hockey community has a large group of collectors there's a ton of raw sales that goes on all the time they're not conducive on just slabbing the cards you know a lot of the uh the eyes in hockey are in canada um many of them likely aren't sending cards to psa or any of the grading companies constantly because shipping alone is expensive so i think it's a matter of they just, if it's graded, cool. If it's not, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't have to be a specific slab. So it's also, that, that's just another thing I wanted to share with you guys. Um, the community in hockey, the pricing, you know, values, all of that stuff. Uh, it's more driven off of performance than hype. Uh, you might have a guy like Lafreniere who was, you know, he was supposed to be really good. He hasn't turned out that way. Still has a chance to, uh, but you know he's young, and he was hyped when it when the the set first came out. But you know he he struggled he struggled and he went down. If he was to start to pick it up, his price would go up. So um, I really like that it's that it's more performance based than hype based. Uh, I think some of the other sports, baseball somewhat because of these prospects now, prospecting prices have gone kind of bonkers. Um, that might have been the Jason Dominguez effect. I don't know. But um, yeah, I think hockey has more natural pricing and performance based and a really, really good community that uh, enjoys collecting and stuff. So um, it's been something again. I, I can't express it enough to you folks that watch uh, the videos that I do for hockey. I've been having a blast. I love watching it. I'm not watching tonight right now any games because I'm recording this. But also because me, we've been watching the stars and the cracking games, and neither one of them are playing tonight. So, but that's all I got for you guys tonight. Hope you have a wonderful Monday night. Hope your Tuesday goes well. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and until the next video, I'm out.